I met a traveller from an antique land who said to vast and trunkless legs of stone stand in the desert. Near them on the sand half sunk a shattered visage lies whose frown and wrinkled lip and sneer of cold command tell that its sculptor well those passions red which yet survive stamped on these lifeless things. The hand that mocked them and the heart that fed and on the pedestal these words appear. My name is Ozymandias, King of Kings. Look on my works, ye mighty in despair. Nothing beside remains, round the decay of that colossal wreck, boundless and bare, the lone and level sands stretch far away. So welcome back to... Breaking Down, Breaking Bad. Um, I've missed out two episodes, Rab uh, Rabid Dog and uh, Tahajali. I just got so busy with other things, uh, so I will get to those episodes um, in the next week before the next episode, Granite State. But yes, we're going to be talking about episode 14 of season 5 of Breaking Bad, Ozymandias, um, the, the, you know, the famous poem that tells of you know a, a fallen empire, a fallen leader, uh, of men and uh, you know it's very symbolic to the uh, the rise and fall of Walter White of the rise and fall of Heisenberg which is pretty much what this episode showed us it showed us the rise and it showed us the fall uh, I was so excited for this episode more than any other because one it was called Ozymandias and you know I, I because of Watchmen I'd looked into Ozymandias and, and what it was and the poem and what it symbolizes and, and all that kind of thing. And so I knew that it was going to be something big. It was going to be really about Walt's uh, defeat, in a way. And uh, his empire was going to crumble and fall, and that was what this was going to be. And I had a feeling it was going to be in the desert as well, because, again, the the, 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 sim the symbolic use of the, the desert in, in the poem Ozymandias. And, of course, Ryan Johnson directed this film, by uh, this film, he directed this episode, and he's one of my favorite film directors. Um, he's directed a few Breaking Bad episodes, 51 from uh, season 5A, and Fly from season 3, which is one of my all-time favorite episodes. A lot of people hate that episode, but I love it. Anyway, Ozymandias, really excited about it for those reasons. You know, Ryan Johnson, I knew he'd do some great stuff with it. And, um, yeah, it was incredible. Um, I put up a video of my live reactions to it because uh, I was just floored by the episode. It was hard to watch, it was great to watch for that reason, and it, it might very well be the best episode of TV I've, I've ever seen. Um, and if you watch it on, on its own, you know, uh, maybe not, but how it's all built to this moment, how it's all kind of just rose into this crescendo of an episode. You know, I mean, the whole season has kind of has built you up and then knocked you down and then built you up again and knocked you down, and now it's just really been building and building but it, it keeps chipping away at itself the whole time and now it's really starting to crumble and, and, and Ozymandias is where it just all goes completely to hell and um, you know you just think where are they going to take it from here so the, the episode opens the cold open we see Walt and Jesse in the RV uh, from the pilot episode you know when they first cook their very first cook out in the desert which I thought was amazing because uh, I did mention in uh, the last uh, no I didn't because I didn't do a video okay well I was gonna say in the, in the last video um, which I didn't make that I loved how when Walter is gets into the desert and at the end of Tajuli or oh, ow I poked myself right in the nose oh that really hurt I'm not gonna cut that out either um, at the end or in the middle in the middle endish of uh, Tajuli uh, Walt goes up onto a rock and he kind of you know, surveys the you know the the scene, and it was the the same rock that Jesse kind of went up onto, again in the pilot episode to see if there was anyone around um, when they parked the RV. And uh, I thought that was brilliant, like bringing it all back to the first episode, um, which is again what what happened in Buried when he was burying the money, bringing it all tying it all back to the to the origin of um, of the, this this meth odyssey. And so uh, when it was fully referenced in the beginning of this I loved it we get we got to see Walt again with the with the hair and the little really lame mustache and we saw Jesse with uh, more hair than he usually has these days and it looked really weird because 
I don't know what's happened, but Aaron Paul has really put on weight in on his head, I think, or his face. It's a much rounder face, and it really stands out when he's got the normal hair again. Particularly when you look at him in the context of the pilot, it just looks really weird. But it was it was cool to see nonetheless. And Walt kind of walks out into the uh, into the the desert there and uh, tries to call, or he does does call Skylar, and makes up his first lie about why he's uh, not home yet, and that is gonna come into play at the end of the episode, or and I'll talk about that at the end of the review. Great little scene to see happier times. It went on for quite a while, actually, the phone call, and it was making me more tense, because I was like, this is obviously signifying that something really bad is going to happen, as if we didn't know that already, but it just got me even more tense, and then the titles hit, and, well, just before the titles hit, we, we saw Walt disappear, and then we saw Jesse disappear in the background, and then the RV disappeared, then the titles, and then we come back, and then it's the the bear, the bear shot, the complete shot that we had just, you know, seconds earlier. And then the cars fade in with the shootout, and that's when it all starts kicking off, and you're just like, wow. Uh, well, not all start, not starts kicking off, but it's continuing to kick off, and it, again, it was just a really, really nice device, I think, that uh, kind of... Maybe put it too bluntly, like, you know, this is where it all started, this is where it's kind of all ending, kind of thing. Um, and then we see instantly that Gomi is dead, uh, Agent Gomez. And I was shocked because um, one of my complaints, and again, I didn't make the video, so it's kind of annoying now, but I, I, I had it in my head that I was going to say that I was really worried because, you know, you had Gomez and Hank standing in the middle of these two cars, loads of space around them. And then you had six guys shooting at them, four with assault rifles, two with guns, and they're just walking towards them shooting slowly, and then they take cover. They don't, they don't, they're not, they're not in a rush to take cover, and yet it seemed as if they didn't even take a hit, and I thought that is really such a stretch, such a leap. But I guess they did get hit, and we just didn't see it. There's a, a shot of, of uh, Gomi when he's kind of leaning against the, 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 uh, the, um, the truck there. It looks like he's in pain, but I didn't think he was actually shot. So, yeah. Um, he was. Uh, I thought. I think maybe they could have shown, you know, Gomi die in Tahajali just to kind of add a bit of a whoa to it, and then end it how they did. But still, that was one of the, the, the craziest cliffhangers, by the way. And I will talk about that when I do the review. I will get to that uh, episode. But so we see that Hank has been shot in the leg. Um, again, personally, as much as I love this episode, I have no complaints. But I kind of would have liked to have seen him have a couple more bullets, you know, like one in the arm or something like that. A couple in the leg, but he just had one on his thigh, and he tries to crawl over to um, Gomi's shotgun, and and that's when uh, Uncle Jack and the Nazis kind of um, well, it's not explicitly said that they're Nazis, but they got swastikas on the neck, so I just call them the Nazis. They they come up and uh, you know they stop Hank from getting the gun, and this is when he's about to shoot Hank, Uncle Jack, and it's just like oh my god, this is it, this is the end of Hank, you know. A character who, who I've had so many conflicting feelings about. I, I really didn't like him in the beginning. I thought this guy's going to grate on me. And then I just really loved him when he started showing a bit more range in Season 2. Then Season 3 with the twins. Oh my god. And that's why I just really was rooting for Hank. And then, you know, it's up and down with Hank. But ultimately I didn't want to see him go. But it was, it was, it was inevitable. At this point there was no way out of it. And then of course Walt comes out and he's, you know, he's begging. For Jack to, to spare his life, but you know why would he? He's a DEA agent, DEA agent, and you know he you know there's just no way he could do it. And uh, you know Jack's understandably a bit pissed off with Walt for not letting them know that he had a brother who was in the DEA or brother-in-law. Uh, and Walt's you know in an act of I don't know what you could even call it an act of, but he he screams that he will give up his whole fortune, his 80 million dollars in cash that are hidden in that very desert to Jack and all of his men if he spares Hank's life and um, you know Hank kind of you know he almost gives Walt a comforting last word and he looks over at Walt and he says you're the smartest man I ever knew uh, but you know I can't remember exactly what his wording, what his wording was but you know, you're the smartest man I ever knew, and you can't see that uh, he made his mind up ten minutes ago. And you just see Walt's face just kind of drop, and that's when 
you know, uh, Hank says, do what you got to do, and he just shoots him straight in the face, and we, we, we come back to a wide shot, and that's when it's like, whoa, fuck, and he just lets you just drink in that moment and it was, as the shot goes back, and it's not gratuitous, and yeah, it's just really well, really well directed, by the way. On top of all the great acting, Dean Norris is great. He he went out like a fucking champ, you know, because um, <laughs> Walt was like, his name is Hank. And Jack's like, is that right, Hank? And he's like, I'm ASAC Schrader. Go fuck yourself. And I was just like, yeah, you, you know, you tell him, Hank, you know, go down fighting, go down with an attitude. And it was the best way for Hank to go if he was going to go. Um, but it was still sad to see. And to see, you know, Gomi get, well, 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 I'll get to that. Let me just quickly, you know, say that, um, Jack then figured out that if Walt's got money hidden out here, the coordinates he gave him in the previous episode must lead to where the, the money is. So they find the money, and they, they're they like, you know, our lucky day, $80 million. They dig it all up, and then they put Gomi and Hank, they just flop them into the grave, or into the hole that now becomes a grave. And um, harsh stuff, uh, and Walt is just devastated, um, unhinged, and just collapses to the floor in a shot that is pretty much identical to the shot of uh, Gus in season 4 after his friend has been shot in the flashback in Mexico so um, I, I don't think it symbolizes anything but it's a cool symmetry uh, one of those visual things that Breaking Bad is known for and is really cool and Walt is just devastated by this you know um, and of course they're looking for Jesse they can't find Jesse, the, the, the car's empty and they're looking and they can't find him um, now Jack, he, he comes up to Walt before they're about to leave and he says, I'm leaving you a barrel, you know, because Todd looks up to you and he'd never forgive me if I, uh, you know, didn't make things right. And so that is where it came into play. I remember I talked about how um, how it was interesting that Todd still had a lot of respect for Walt in that diner scene uh, a few episodes ago. And I thought that would come into play later on and it did, obviously. So Walt still has some money, I think around 11 million in one of those barrels. And Walt's, and you know, Jack comes up to Walt, and Walt is just devastated still. And he says, You know, we're square, right? I have to know that we're square. And Walt just can't even bring himself to say anything, and he just lightly shakes his hand. But you know, that's not the end of it. You know, Walt is going to get payback for, for killing Hank. And that's when he says uh, to Jack, You know, you still haven't done what you owe me. You know, you haven't killed Jesse. And he's like, Well, find him, and I'll, I'll kill him. And Walt's like, Found him. And he's looking underneath the car, and there's Jesse. Underneath the car, the gas tank is leaking, and it's like, oh my god, no. Now, my problem is, it, it, the, the floor was a bit of a, a dent going, you know, like you could see where it was hiding, but really, if Todd and the other guys were looking, they would look under the car. It, it just seemed, it was a bit of a stretch. Uh, if they were looking around the area, they would have at least checked underneath the fucking car first. But, I was so caught up in the moment that it shocked me and so it worked you know that artistic license that artistic leap worked for me and it is a minor nibble, uh, nibble <laughs> minor quibble but uh, you know it is what it is uh, and it didn't bother me but uh, it just stood out a little um, in retrospect uh, so yeah after that they pull Jesse up they're about to shoot him Jack says you good to go and Walt just nods and Jesse looks up and he sees these two birds flying and then they've got sort of meet each other, the path kind of intertwines, and I just thought that's it, I thought they're going to kill him, because he, the gun is to his head, and Walt just nods, how can he get out of it, and, and for the, the only time I have ever thought that Jesse would die was that moment right there, uh, I haven't thought it since, and I'll never think it again, <laughs> which I'll get into a bit later, but man, they got me, they got me, it's a thing where you just know that Jesse is going to survive, at least till the very end, and um, for them to pull off just, just that tiny millisecond of doubt is, uh, is, is for me, a masterclass, because, you know, I'm, I'm assuming most people think like I do too, and that they know that Jesse is going to survive till the end. It's just one of those things that you, you feel and you know, and just based on the character and what he's been through, and how he's kind of the moral compass of the show, of all the people who have broke bad, basically, um, you know, he he didn't want to kill kill Gale. He was devastated when he killed Gale. Unlike Walt, who has never really shown that much remorse after killing people. Uh, at least, you know, in by the time we get to season three, season four, when he fully kind of becomes Heisenberg, 
Jesse has always had this guilt, and that's why he's the moral compass of the show for the people who have broken bad, and there's really not that many people who haven't in the show. Um, so, yeah, you kind of know that he's going to survive, and it would just be horrible if he didn't, but they, they pulled off that moment for me, personally, of doubt, which was uh, which was exciting. It made my heart jump, you know, and that, that's what I want from the show. It's great. And so they decide that, um, or Todd kind of puts it forward, he's like, hey, stop, you know, let's bring Jesse, and we can... Uh, get some information out of him, what he's told the DEA and, and all that kind of thing and we later see that he has ulterior motives with that so Walt is left to drive back home with his barrel of, uh, of cash I don't know where that would fit in the car by the way um, I might have missed that but um, the, the car runs out of gas because of course as we saw when Jesse was lying underneath it was leaking so Walt has to roll his barrel through the desert <laughs> Until he finds this shack with a truck and he, he buys the truck with all his money. And uh, a great little visual. As Walt is rolling the barrel through the desert, you can see his pants from episode one. <laughs> Absolutely awesome. How can you argue with that? that? That awesome kind of Easter egg, I guess you could call it. But also, again, bringing it all back to, and I hate to recycle the word over and over again, but the symbolism of uh, this episode and of Ozymandias. Uh, you know, the, the fallen empire and all that kind of thing, and, and there it is just lying there, you know, it's as plain as it, as, it, as it gets, really, if you spot it. Uh, so he drives back in this truck, and I, I forget where the episode goes in terms of uh, chron chronologically how it's cut. Um, I guess we I could talk about um, Skylar is visited by Marie at the car wash, and Skylar says, you know, Hank's got Walt, and he's put him in custody, he's got him in handcuffs, and you know, as much as I kind of don't even know who you are anymore, I'm willing to give you a chance if you, you know, just just thinking everything over, she was kind of thinking about how, you know, Skylar was really kind of upset and had these issues and how they had to have the kids taken away from them, she thought. And Marie's thinking, maybe you're not as bad as I'm thinking and, and that Walt was really putting you into this position. If you delete all of the, all of any evidence of that stupid tape that you made, you know, with Walt saying that it was Hank that did everything, if you just delete all the existence of that and tell Walt Jr. what's been going on, then I'll, I'll give you a chance, basically, to, to, be, to be my sister again. She doesn't say that, but that's what she means. And Skylar's like, no way, I'm not telling Walt Jr. And Marie's like, well, I'll tell him if you don't. So that's that. Uh, and I think maybe then is when we see Jesse. He's in this bunker uh, underground. Well, not underground, but, you know, um, it is underground. But, you know, once you take the hatch off, it's, uh, it's not that far underground. But it's like a pit, basically. And uh, you know it, the the hatch gets opened and Todd comes down to pick up Jesse and Jesse's face is mangled, he's got cuts and, and his face is charred and his his, his eye is shut uh, from swelling and it's a horrible sight to see and Jesse's just at his absolute worst. It's difficult viewing, to say the least. And wow, I can't believe I forgot one of the biggest moments of the episode. Talk about difficult viewing. Just before they drag Jesse off in the desert and in, in uh, you know to to Hadley. Uh, the place, not the episode, um, even though the episode is named after the place. They're taking Jesse away, and Walt says, Wait. And uh, I don't know I don't know why I was expecting him to say something like, I wish it didn't have to go down this way, or something like that. But he just looks at Jesse straight in the eye, just cold as day, and says, I watched Jane die. I was there. You know, I watched her overdose, and I didn't do anything. Oh my god, that's one of the most horrific things I've ever seen anyone say to anyone in any film, in any TV show, anywhere, ever. Um, wow, I was waiting for that to come up, I knew it would come up, it was one of those loose ends that, you know, Jesse just had to find out about it sometime. And I guess that was the way that it was going to go, you know, Jesse kind of, he sold Walt out and he, you know, he, you know, he was responsible for the death of Hank, but again... Walt is responsible for everything here. All of his actions have led to all of these consequences, but you know, in Walt's mind, Jesse is, is the one who has brought Hank into the situation and got him killed. Um, and you know, that is kind of true, but if Walt hadn't got the ball rolling with all that other stuff to begin with, then none of it would have happened. But of course, he doesn't blame himself, he blames others, and that's how Walt is, or how he's become. And so, Jesse is his ultimate, obviously. Uh, devastated by this ultimately, and um, but I was thinking honestly, I thought the way this episode was going, I don't mean to drag this ep this video out really really long, but I was really thinking the way this was going that Jesse and Walt were going to get held captive by Uncle Jack and his crew, 
and that Walt would be like, you know, that's it, I'm done, I'm finished, and they're going to kill me or whatever, and just gets really low and would tearfully admit to Jesse that he, he saw Jane die and he's so sorry, and that Jesse doesn't have to feel guilty about it. I thought that it was going to go that way, but it went completely the opposite way that I thought, and it was harsh, it was really harsh. So Jesse, Jesse is at his lowest ebb right now. He's had this bombshell dropped on him, this horrible incident has happened, and he's now been beaten half to death. He's, you know, being held captive, and now we now see that Todd takes him into his lab and is like, let's cook. And he chains him up to this thing. So Jesse is being made to show Todd how to get the meth as pure as it can be and to get it blue and all this kind of stuff. And then Jesse sees something in this dark corner and the camera's panning in slowly. I'm like, what is it? And of course, it wasn't what we're supposed to be looking at in the shadows. It's right in front of us. A, a photograph on this beam and it's of Brock and his mother, I forget that, Andrea. So they know who, they know about Andrea and Brock and that's when Jesse just, again, devastated. And, and this is why I know Je Jesse will not die, he will survive till the end and uh, whatever happens he's going to be the last man standing I think because there's no way they can put him through that much and uh, giving his conscience, uh, I don't think they, they're going to... Uh, kill him off. I just, I just can't see it. I just cannot see them doing that. Just putting him through all that and then killing him. Just no chance. Um, now, Then we see a quick scene of, of, of Walt Jr. and Skylar and Marie and, and Walt Jr. can't believe it. He's like, it's bullshit. You know, no, you can't believe it. He's shocked and he's stunned and he, he leaves. And I've heard people criticize his performance. I thought it was brilliant. You know, I thought it was... He didn't overdo it. You know, he didn't shout and go, ah, oh, you know, and all this kind of stuff. And it, it, it was, you know, it was fiery but it wasn't over the top and, and I, I really bought it and thought it was really good and then we see uh, Skylar drive Walt Jr. home and they see the truck outside with a barrel of money and Walt is just packing all this stuff and he's like we gotta go we gotta get out of here and Skylar's like where's Hank because she thought that he was you know in custody and Walt's dodging around it and he's trying to swipe it away and then she's like where is Hank and he's like and she's like, you killed him, didn't you? And he's like, I, I tried to stop it. And then that's when she just loses it. And, uh, you know, he, he walks off and he's like, come on, we're, we're leaving. We'll, I'll explain everything later. Walt Jr.'s like, this can't be true. This can't be true. And then Skylar picks up a knife. And then that's when shit just starts getting real. Oh, my God. And Walt is like, what are you doing? And he tries to get towards her. And she slashes his hand and the gash is open. And that's when she goes for him and he goes for her and they're fighting with a knife and I'm just absolutely losing my mind thinking that one of them is going to get stabbed or that Skylar's going to get stabbed. They fall to the ground. I'm like, oh my God. Walt Jr. He's like, well, what's going on? Why are you doing this? And the baby's crying in the background. Walt Jr. gets involved in the fray and they're rolling around together with this massive knife and I'm like, someone is going to get stabbed. This is just insane. And then Walt Jr. He gets, uh, you know, he gets in front of his mum and he covers her and, uh, protects her and I almost well up thinking about it it was uh, such a moving moment in such an intense scene of you know a young man becoming a man and standing up for you know what you know for his family you know he was doing what Walt always thought he was doing but in a much more noble way it was just as black and white as just protecting your mother from harm protecting your family from harm even if it's from your own father and that to me was just fantastic and I thought that um, RJ Mitty did a fantastic job um, I would say that you know Brian Cranston, Anna Gunn, even Betsy Brandt, Aaron Paul, Dean Norris did much better jobs in, in this episode than RJ Mitty but that's only because there was so much more to work with but for him you know, in terms of what he's done throughout the series, it was so good to see him get something to really sink his teeth into and pull off, because he really pulled it off. Uh, and that was really awesome, so major kudos to him. I loved that moment. I could have jumped up and cheered for Walt Jr. I loved it. Uh, and I've always liked Walt Jr. I'm glad to see him get that moment. And that's when Walt just kind of, well, well Walt Jr., he phones the police. He's like, my dad's here and he's, he's trying to attack my mum. You know, he's almost pulling a bit of a, a Walt Sr. on him, you know, it, kind of a, a bit of a lie. And that's when Walt leaves and he takes Holly with him and it's like, oh my god, this just keeps getting more insane. Skylar's running out into the streets, chasing after Walt in the truck, screaming for her, her, her daughter back. And Wow, you know, <laughs> it's just crazy. Um, so then we, 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 we go into the final scene and um, my camera... My camera uh, uh, life is about to run out, so I'm just going to turn this off and, and head right back into it. 
All right, we're back in the game, and uh, so we, the final scene of this, uh, really, in a way, is um, is Skylar. Yeah, she's got Marie over, she's got the police over, and they've tapped her phone, and Walt calls them. And uh, probably one of the best scenes of anything I've ever seen, films, TV, otherwise. Walt is on the phone to Skylar. He asks if she's alone. She says she's alone, but he knows she isn't. And uh, he proceeds to kind of berate her about how angry he is, about how she never appreciated anything that he did for the for, for for this family. All that he's done, all the sacrifices he's made and all this kind of thing, and he just he's literally just like, you bitch, he is just spewing venom at her. And part of it is true. Well part of it is 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 true from Walt. He really does feel this. He really does feel this anger against her that that she has hindered him and that she has not appreciated what he's done. But it's it's so much more layered and complicated than that because he then goes on to to say, you know, um, this is what happens when you cross me. I told you this. If you cross me, this is what would happen. And you're thinking, when did he say that? And he said, and look what happened to Hank. You know, uh, you will you will not be seeing Hank again, which is implying that he killed him, which is not true. And that's when she realizes what he's doing. He really just puts all the responsibility on himself and the whole time when he's been so angry on the other end of the phone in between every break of what he's saying he is just weeping just really hard the tears are streaming down his face he's struggling to keep his face straight and it's just heartbreaking it's absolutely heartbreaking because you know he's doing it to protect his family he's still angry at her but ultimately it was a moment of Redemption that was far too late, you know, but it is what it is and um, ultimately he saved his, his family from, uh, thus far anyway, um, being implicated in everything that he's done and that is uh, that's the best thing he could have done. That doesn't mean I support his actions and there's a lot of people online who are really kind of like, you know, how can you support Walt and all this kind of thing. For me, it's it's so different. It's It's not as black and white as liking Walt or not liking Walt. Walt is pretty much a psychopath by this point. Walt is the bad guy of Breaking Bad. But you still want to root for him because you still want him to somehow redeem himself slightly at the end of it, you know? You want him to bring it, make it right, you know? For me personally, I think that if he dies at the end and he should somehow leave his money to his family in a smart kind of way and, uh, and free Jesse of this life that Walt has kind of placed him into, you know? Uh, that is what I want to see, that... that Moment of redemption that is far too late, but is the best that could happen. We'll see. We'll see where it goes. Breaking Bad is usually much more twisted than you can predict, so it definitely uh, could go any which way but loose. Uh, or even loose, I guess. I don't know. Um, <laughs> it, it could go anywhere, really. Amazing episode, and, you know, Walt, um, he's crying and he, he looks down at Holly. And I almost thought for a second he was going to smother her or something. <laughs> but he ends up leaving her in the fire station in a truck with her, the address on it so that she can be taken back. And it was kind of like his last act of, um, Dar Darren Locke was saying in his review, his last act of power. You know, taking Holly away to have some last kind of foothold in the situation. Because by this point he is fucked. He is well and truly fucked. He is up shit, shit creek without a chance of ever getting a paddle. And um, he's done. And then we see you know, Walt leave and uh, he's sitting in the spot where Jesse was waiting this is what's great, is that in Rabid Dog when Jesse decides he's going to get a new identity and go to Alaska and then he finds out about the rice and him deciding to go to Alaska and that whole conversation and waiting out there didn't really need to happen, you know you could have cut out that exposition but it was so important because it makes this episode all the better because we didn't have to have, after all this intense stuff, a five minute scene of Walt and Saul consulting over this and, and Saul saying, oh, wait by there, the guy will pick you up, he'll be in a van that looks like this. We already know this. So it cuts out the exposition in an episode that really doesn't need it. And that is, that is one thing that really worked well in this season so far, I think. A really cool thing that I noticed, um, at, looking at it from a filmmaking point of view anyway. Um, also interesting how the episode is bookended by two scenes of Walt and Skylar on the phone with, uh, you know, with Walter out in his element, Skylar at home, uh, in two very different situations, but at the beginning, the very beginning, the first day, in fact, of, of him cooking meth and this meth odyssey, becoming Heisenberg, and the last day of it, when it's, it's all done, 
you know, at, at least, you know, he's been caught, the game's up kind of thing, you know. And interestingly enough, she was pregnant at the time and they were talking about baby names and Holly. And at the end of the episode, he's got Holly and he's holding her hostage, you know, and, and it's just such a, such a polar opposite scene. It's, it's insane. And that scene, the phone call at the end of the episode, that that is that's one Cranston uh, an Emmy w without a shadow of a doubt. If he doesn't win an Emmy next year for that performance, then uh, there's something wrong with this world because that was out of this world. Uh, incredible acting. Um, so yeah, uh, we see Walt in the in the truck and off into the distance. He's gone off to a new life, which we saw in the beginning of episode uh, one of this season. So I'm sure that's where we're going to pick things up with Granite State. It's going to be really interesting to see what happens to Skylar and Walt Jr. and Holly. Also worth noting that what really killed me was when, when Walt said on the phone, you know, you're never going to see Hank again, and just Marie's reaction. I could have cried right there. It's just unreal. Absolutely unreal. It feels so bad for Marie. Um, what a show. And then, you'll, you'll, if you've seen my live reactions video, um... Yeah, this bit really, I, I loved it at the end when the, the car drove off into the distance and then just this dog just ran across the screen and just hopped hopped out of view. It, it almost made me cry. It was just such a beautiful kind of thing. And I I don't think it's even, it's not really symbolizing anything. And uh, It must have been planned, of course. There's no way something that good could have happened by accident. But um, I think it's just one of those things that I can't even put my finger on it, but it, it touched me for some reason. There was something about it that was just so innocent. Uh, just this little dog just trotting along and, and just jumping off, and then that was it. Credits. I don't know. That that bit I just loved. So that was my review. My very long review of the amazing episode of Breaking Bad, Ozymandias. Possibly my favorite episode of the whole show so far. And uh, I said in my review of Confessions earlier on in this half season, the moment when Walt says in that Confessions video, you know, this is my confession. My brother-in-law Hank Schrader has been, you know, building a meth empire. That is when I said, "This is the best show I've ever seen." That's the moment where I knew it was the best show I'd ever seen, and uh, the best show ever. This was the moment that I knew that this was the best season ever. I never thought that this season would top season four. For me, season four was absolutely amazing. It was incredible. It was this big saga, this drug saga with Fring and and uh, and uh, Don Eladio and all this. And then Mike and, and and Saul and all these people in the mix and and Fring to me was was integral to that and we had Hector Salamanca Tio as well, just such a great cast of characters and story that kind of ended at the end of season four and I thought they're not going to be able to top that and if you look at the first half of season five they didn't top that in my opinion it, it was great but it wasn't quite as good. Now that you add this second half to it, the payoff it makes it so much more contextually better in my opinion. That the, this season five is just in my opinion, the finest piece of television uh, in a season that there has ever been. Even if you just look at it from this season, this half season, even these eight, eight episodes, not a moment has been wasted, you know. Um, even the little scenes like Badger and Skinny Pete do this, the goofy Star Trek story, you know, that that wasn't a moment wasted because it was, it was bringing you down a bit, you know, and just letting you enjoy these characters for the last time before the real shit kicks in because you can't go full gear for eight hours, you know, <laughs> at the end of the at the end of the whole series. So, absolutely brilliant. This episode is ten out of ten, amazing for me. And another small moment when Holly is, you know, Walt's kind of changing her in this uh, this restroom, and she's like just just asking for a mum, mama, you know, just heartbreaking. I think that's when Walt realized, you know, that she had to kind of do something. And it was uh, probably uh, an irrational decision to take her away. But then this whole series has been based off Walter's irrational decisions. Um, so, yeah. Thank you for watching. Um, hope you enjoyed. And I'm spent. I spent the whole day thinking about this and just what I was going to say. And, yeah. Thank you for watching. Yeah, he's really cool. <laughs> but he's not quite as cool as you. Because... <laughs>